Welcome to our Blackboard discussion on Monopoly number four. Now in this particular discussion, we're going to use this model again. So let's draw a straight line as we can. Price, quantity. I'll put a big Q there. Price here. And we'll draw our demand curve like this. And we'll put D there for demand. And we'll say, oh, I don't know, 30 is the intersection. So we do something like 15 here. And we'll draw our marginal revenue curve which will be somewhere oops somewhere about like that marginal revenue and we're going to find out the what profit maximizing era quantity so we would look at our marginal cost line that looks like that this gives us marginal cost equals marginal revenue about how much oh i don't know i'd say about 12 units what do we sell them for? You got to go up to the demand curve, go over to the price, figure out what that price would be. Oh, I don't know. Let's just put a price there. We'll put $85. So that's how much you could sell 12 units for $85. And that rectangle, remember, is your total revenue. So what's your cost? Well, now that's a different story altogether. You've got to find your average total cost line. Well, the average total cost, it's just there and goes up like that at a minimum where it crosses the marginal cost line just like before so now you find out the total cost of making 12 units 12 times the average total cost come over here in this case oh it looks like something like sixty five dollars well the cost is low the revenue is high and you end up with something that's called you got it profits so this difference right in here is profits and we said well that's the end of the story last time and it is the end of the story total costs total revenues gives you profits nobody enters the market well when we look at this diagram what's wrong with that so what we have company B they're a monopolist what do we care so what what's so bad about that what do we care so they make a lot of money what's wrong with that why can't they here it is this is why if you look at this demand curve, marginal revenue doesn't equal the marginal benefit of producing or of consuming this stuff. The demand curve is showing us the marginal benefit of consuming these units. What about the 13th unit? What is the marginal benefit to society? Well, it's up here. What's the marginal cost? It's down here. The monopolist isn't making that unit, and yet the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. What about the next unit? No. Why isn't it making that unit? Look, the marginal benefit's up here. Because the marginal benefit isn't what the monopolist is worried about. They're worried about marginal revenue. So they don't make all of these units here up to this point where marginal cost equals marginal benefit. Now, in the pure competition model, you did. So we lose out on all this space here. Some people call it the dead weight loss. Uh, it's all these mutually beneficial exchanges that could occur, but they're not going to. Because if the monopolist increases output, its marginal cost is greater than its marginal revenue. Its total profits would go down. So it's not going to do that. So this is the inefficiency. Some people call it the welfare loss. We're going to call it a kind of inefficiency here. This is not allocative efficient. So let's put this note over here. What's bad about a monopoly? One, not allocative efficient. Bad news. They're not doing this. What else is bad news about a monopoly? I'll show you something else that's bad news about a monopoly. Simple enough. Look at this. Look at this right here. That's the minimum average total cost. Right there is minimum average total cost. Wait a minute. You mean that's the least costly way to produce this good? You bet it is. Well, what's company B doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. They're producing at it way up here. Not production efficient either. E-gads, this is bad news. Why? Well, we have this big problem we started the course with. Unlimited wants 
and limited resources. Remember that? Unlimited wants, limited resources. They're not using our resources efficiently and they're not producing where benefit is greater than cost. This is a disaster. This isn't what we want when companies and markets work. So what happens in these situations? Well, all of this badness means sometimes governments come in and try to do something about it. And yet, governments give patents, so they produce monopolies. And monopoly number five, we'll talk one more time about this particular issue and why it is and how it is that it's sometimes good and sometimes bad. See you then.